Gwindi Impenetrable National Park is one of the few national parks where the mountain gorillas are found. And the mountain gorillas are very different from the lowland gorillas in a variety of ways. First of all, where they live. The mountain gorillas live in high altitude areas in the mountains. They have longer hair than uh, the lowland gorillas. And the body structure is much bigger than the lowland gorillas. There are very few in number. There are only 750 mountain gorillas in the whole world. The people who live around Gwindi National Park and Mugahinga National Park are Bachiga and Bafumbira, and I'm one of them. I'm, I'm Fumbira by tribe. So, Mwani Mwejis and Mukoranka, Muka LC1, Mwena and Mujaham. The inhabitants of this area used to live in harmony with the mountain gorillas or wildlife. But as populations grew, as modernization of agriculture came into place, as transport became easier, things have changed. And in trying to look at why and how pathogens move between people, the apes, and the domestic animals, and what lessons I can give to the communities to make sure that there is a reduction in risk in disease transmission between the three species. So. One of the challenges is making sure the communities around the park are healthy. The domestic animals should be healthy and to make sure there is no interaction. And it's because the mountain gorillas haven't been exposed to these diseases before. They have no immunity if TB or something like measles went into the population, it would wipe it out. If I got into policy, I would like to see the government caring more about ecosystems. The governments in Africa, I can see them concentrating on particular species, particular animals, particular areas, and the ecosystems don't work that way. I think we have to start caring from something as small as bacteria, frogs, butterflies, to megafauna animals, because they all contribute to ecosystems. And that's something I would like to see changed in policy. What we're trying to do with the elephants too is that we're trying to augment their breathing by controlling their respirations a little bit so that we wouldn't have to give them dopran. In Envirovet, uh, they were able to teach me an integrated approach to wildlife management. They teach you about conservation medicine or the, the ecology, they teach you a bit of management, they teach you about how they change policy, how, what they go through to make governments change policy to suit conservation. I'll give you an example. When I was working to protect habitat for the tiny little cactus virginus pigmeow, the um, county wanted to hear how they could retain viability for their developers in the county while still protecting habitat for this and with such a, a wonderful team that they bring on board with wide experience. People are very experienced in wildlife management, policy, and conservation. When I talk about politics and policy, I often put up a matrix that has a good politics, bad politics, good science, bad science. Since that's a matrix that has like 12 and a half percent. And they tell you the challenges they've been facing and how they have overcome the challenges. And those are the things as a vet, when you're practicing as a vet, or when you're vet school, you don't study. We've, we've gone ahead and checked the testes, both testes. Uh, while at EnviroVet, I mingled a lot with um, all kinds of students. I got a chance to talk to people who came from Argentina, people from Brazil, people from Norway, and someone from Norway like Katrina has a lot in common with someone like me who is working with the world. She may be working with ecosystems, aquatic ecosystems in Europe, but somehow the lessons, the challenges they go through are nearly the same. So we teach each other, we, we learn from each other. And we may be different in the continent, we may be dealing with the different species, but the problems are nearly the same. When it comes to, to policy, convincing a politician to change the policy so that it suits conservation. It's, it's the same world over.